Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of our Conversations podcast. Today, I am having a conversation with you. Yep, you heard that right. We are going to chat for just a second. I want to share with you um, about five bold predictions that I'm making for 2021. So, buckle your seatbelt. Let's get ready. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Antioch Audio Podcast. Today, we're sharing an intentional conversation to help you follow Christ in a life-changing way. Let's jump in. So to be honest, I have never written a blog post like this. Uh, Today's conversation podcast is based off of a blog post that I wrote for our church. You can find that in written format at AntiochGT.com. And again, I've never started out a year writing a blog post that kind of looks forward into the year to make predictions. But for some reason, I felt like God was uh, laying this particular idea um, on on my heart. Um, I, I'm not coming at you with some sort of prophetic voice. This is not some sort of you know word from the Lord. Um, it's not Andy looking into a crystal ball. And I'm trying to stay away from the kind of fortune cookie predictions. You know what I'm talking about, right? You open up the fortune cookie, and there's a phrase there that could apply to to basically anybody and everybody. These kind of over generalized um, good thoughts. Okay, that's that's not what this blog post is about. That's not what this conversation is about. These are about five bold predictions for 2021. Before we get into them, let's kind of think back over the past year. Um, This has definitely been an unprecedented year, to say the least. I mean, I I can imagine uh, years from now, people kind of looking back on on 2020 and and saying things like, remember when it used to be okay to walk into a bank wearing a mask and ask for money? Uh, Remember when we had that that toilet paper shortage of, of 2020? I mean, these are kind of the things that... Um, that I think we're going to be talking about in the future. So it definitely was an unprecedented year. Now, rewind the clock with me back to a year ago. I think all of us were um, kind of approaching the year 2020 with great anticipation and enthusiasm. I mean, we were ready for this new year. Not only was it a new year, um, but it was the, the year that was going to dawn a new decade. I mean, 2020 is is uh, the phrase we use for perfect vision. And so we were, uh, I heard a lot of people and organizations talking about how this was going to be the year of, of vision. This is going to be the year where we, where we reach some goals. And then 2020 actually happened. And here's the thing. No one saw it coming. <laughs> no one was expecting it. No one had worldwide pandemic, um, global shutdown, stay-at-home order, cancel graduation, no summer camp, uh, baseball season postponed. I mean, no one saw these things coming except God. I want to to remind you, before we get into to these uh, five bold predictions, I want to remind you that, that God saw 2020 coming. Um, it did not take him by surprise. And I'm reminded of something that, that uh, King David wrote um, in Psalm 139. Uh, and before I read it, I want you to realize that, that David knew the feeling of isolation as he was hiding alone in caves. Uh, David knew what despair um, felt like. David understood deep depression. And yet under the, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, um, David reflects upon God's constant presence in his life. And and here's what David writes, Psalm 139, verse 16. All my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them began. Wow. Isn't that good? David reminds us that that every single day in our life, um, God knows it. God knows exactly what's going to happen. It's not going to take him by surprise. In fact, try to wrap your mind around around this statement. God knows your future with perfect memory. 
I mean, I, I don't even know yesterday uh, with perfect memory, and I, and I just lived yesterday. Uh, but God not only knows our yesterdays with perfect memory, God knows our future with perfect memory. And God has a plan, and His plan has perfect purpose. So um, I, I got to start with with that because as we make these um as I make these five bold predictions for for 2021 we have to do it against the the backdrop of God's omnipotence his omniscience and his omnipresence he's all powerful he's all knowing and he is with us no matter what 2021 holds now why am I making these predictions um what's the point in in doing this am I trying to to instigate fear am I, am I trying just to to put out some some fluffy encouragement for people no I'm doing this because of uh first chronicles twelve thirty two it it speaks about the men of Issachar and it says they understood the times and they knew what Israel should do listen church um, as Christ followers, we must be aware of the culture that we're living in. We must understand the times, and not just so that we can have intellectual knowledge about what's going on around us and so that we can stay up to date on current events and the news, but we need to understand the times so that we can know how to live, so that we can know how to act, so that we can know how to walk in wisdom with all sort of boldness. So without further ado, uh, here are my five bold predictions for 2021. Number one, I believe the unexpected will occur again. The unexpected will occur again. Now, we can look back on 2020 and we see the unexpected did occur, but I want to kind of make a prediction in 2021 that the unexpected will occur again. Now, here's what I mean. I've been hearing a lot of people say, maybe you've said this and I've even said it, okay? Um, I can't wait for 2021 to get here. Have you heard people say that? Have you said that yourself? I can't wait for 2021 to get here. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand the sentiment of that statement. It comes with a desire to put 2020 in the past and move on with life. Look, there is nothing wrong with that. However, let us not be guilty of putting our hope in a year. Look, 2021 is not going to save us. I mean, you think about it. When the clock strikes midnight, and now all of a sudden we get to sign our checks 2021, not, not just 2020, that does not mean that our problems will just magically disappear. I mean, when, when 2021 arrives... The, the struggles and, and the problems and the conflict that we faced in, in 2020 and, and that we're currently facing, that they don't just disappear. They don't just automatically go away because a new year arrived. Nothing changes unless something truly changes. And a change on the calendar does nothing more than simply change the date because it is a, a record of time. And so, um, don't put your hope in 2021. There's still going to be conflict. Um, there's still going to be divisions and turmoil. In fact, 2021 holds its own version of the unexpected. And I wish I could tell you what that is, but I can't. Um, that's why it is unexpected. Now, uh, I'm not saying this to be doom and gloom, but I am saying this to help us recognize where are we putting our trust? Where are we putting our hope? Are we putting our hope in the simple fact that a new year is here? Are we putting our hope in a, in a new uh, president who will take office? Or are we putting our trust and our hope in God? Let me remind us of Psalm 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. So my first prediction for 2021, the unexpected will occur again. My second prediction is this, unity among believers will be paramount, paramount. Yes, it will be extremely important. Hey, did you know that Jesus actually uh, very specifically prayed for you the night before he was crucified? Imagine that for a second. Think about it. I mean, Jesus knew what was coming. He was about to, um, to walk through the most excruciating, horrifying death that any person could ever experience 
And what was he doing the night before? Well, he was praying. <laughs> and he was praying for you. Do you know what his specific prayer was? No, Jesus was not praying for your health and your wealth and your safety and security. Jesus was actually praying for your unity with other believers. Hey, there have been issues in 2020 that, um, that have brought about division, uh, and not just between the world and, and Christians, but even amongst Christians ourselves. Um, the world That's what the world does. Uh, the world brings about division. Um, that's the nature of a fallen and a sinful world. The world only knows how to produce chaos, and it's good at it. It's very good at it. So there's going to be things in 2021 that will potentially divide us, and it's imperative that we as believers, as followers of Christ, live in unity, and not for just our sakes, but for the sake of the world. Listen, your, your salvation is not at stake uh, when, when it comes to unity with other believers, but the salvation of other people is at stake. Jesus prays for our oneness, and he gives us the reason why. He says, so that the world may believe that God sent him. I want you to think about that. Our unity as Christians, as followers of Christ, as believers in the one true God, our unity becomes a witness to a divisive and chaotic world. And so as more division and more chaos comes into the world, listen, the unity among believers is extremely paramount. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to agree on every single issue, but it does mean that we should love one another with a, with a brotherly love. It does mean that we should stay unified on the things that are important. We should major on the majors and minor on the minors. And so think about that as you, as you head into this new year, that, that unity will be paramount. Number three, as I'm making these predictions, uh, my third prediction is this. Your faith will be tested. Hey, my faith will be tested. This coming year will most certainly provide opportunities and situations for us to practice what we preach, to walk what we talk, and to do what we say. Our faith will be tested. Hey, if, if you're paying attention to, to the news and, and current events and things that are going on all around us, you're going to notice something. What you'll notice is the world is actually becoming more hostile towards Christianity. Now, notice I didn't say Christians. It's not that the world is becoming more hostile towards Christians, but the world is becoming more hostile towards Christianity. Sure, there's a lot of people that, that are claiming that title Christian, but they're not really living out the principles and, and beliefs of true Christianity. Now, just to be clear, the world will gladly accept the love, forgiveness, kind of do-unto-others version of Christianity. But the world emphatically rejects absolute truth, the reality of the resurrection, and Jesus as the only way. So what are the implications of a, of a world that is growing more hostile towards Christianity? Well, the implications are that if you're committed to living a life for Jesus, your faith will be tested. It's going to be tested by your neighbors, by your, your co-workers, by people on social media. It's going to be tested by uh, people you know and people you don't know. You'll be hushed, silenced, ridiculed, mocked, questioned. But don't be alarmed when these things happen. Because you and I, we have a solid foundation in Jesus Christ. We can stand on the authority of His truth. We can stand on the authority of, of God's Word. And so let me remind you as I, as I close out this one, um, what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 33. But whoever denies me before others... I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. So know this. Hey, as you head into 2021, your faith will be tested. My fourth bold prediction for 2021 is this. Skepticism will increase. Skepticism will increase. Now, sure, there's, there's an agenda and, and there's, a, there's motivation to, to try to get people to stop being so skeptical. But my prediction is that skepticism will will only continue to increase. You've probably noticed over the past year 
that it's becoming harder and harder to find trustworthy sources. I mean, who do you listen to? Who's telling the truth? You know, it seems like for for every expert, there's an equal and opposite expert. Thankfully, we've got big tech to save the day, right, with their fact-checking algorithms. Right. Hey, this past year has amplified the skepticism of news, media, politicians, big tech, pastors, yes, even pastors and spiritual leaders. And so the question is, who can we trust? Who do we trust? Let me give you kind of two steps. First, we need to understand that people will let us down. Men and women um, that maybe used to be trustworthy will let us down. People can lead us astray. And people can be led astray because of selfish ambition and faulty rationale. And that's why it's so important that we have a plumb line, that we can measure all thoughts and ideas, whether that thought and idea is coming from your pastor in the pulpit or whether it's coming from the news media or whether it's coming from a friend posting on on social media. We need a plumb line. And the Bible is that plumb line. It's the standard of absolute truth. And so if something does not measure up with the plumb line, we know it's not trustworthy. And so kind of the second thing next, um, once we're grounded in the truth of God's word, we should ask God plainly and clearly to give us discernment through his Holy Spirit. That's what he promises us, right? That's what Jesus said the the Holy Spirit was coming to do. He would be our comforter. He would be our guide. And so as you navigate 2021, use your guide. I mean, God has given you his Holy Spirit within you to be a discerning spirit. And so when that alarm starts to sound, you start to sense this is a yellow flag or or a red flag. Look, don't put that away. Listen to the Holy Spirit um, as he guides you. Psalm 40 verse 4 says this, How happy is anyone who puts his trust in the Lord and has not turned to the proud or to those who run after lies. Look, don't turn to the proud. Don't turn towards those who are running after lies lies, but put your trust in the Lord. Skepticism will increase, but as followers of Christ, we don't have to be skeptical because we can stand on the truth and authority of God's word. All right, here we are. Number five, rounding out my five predictions for 2021. Here it is. The Bible will still be relevant. Listen, I think there's this common mis conception that as time goes on, the Bible loses its relevancy. I believe that as time goes on, the Bible actually gains in relevancy, if that were even the case. Look, the Bible has always been relevant. It will always be relevant. And it's not relevant because I make it so or or because I find some sort of helpful tidbit to guide me throughout my day. Listen very carefully. I am not the central figure in the Bible, and neither are you, because the Bible is not about us. The Bible is about Jesus Christ from beginning to end. It is his story. It is God's redemptive story of mankind. Now, don't get me wrong. The Bible does show us the way. It teaches us how to live. It directs our path. It reveals what unconditional love looks like. The Bible purifies our motive. It sheds light on all of our imperfections. And most importantly, the Bible does point us to Jesus Christ. But we are not the central figure. He is. Christ is. And that is more or will be more relevant in 2021 than ever before. 2 Timothy 3.15 says this, And you know that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures which are able to give you wisdom for salvation and faith in Christ Jesus. And so my prediction for 2021 is that the Bible will still be relevant. In fact, I think it'll be more relevant than ever if that were even possible. We don't have to make it relevant. We just have to read it and understand it and let it guide and influence our everyday life, our thoughts, our motive, and our hearts. So, There you have it, my five bold predictions for 2021. Let me recap them all together and then kind of give you uh, some final action steps. Number one, the unexpected will occur again. Number two, 
unity among believers will be paramount. Number three, your faith will be tested. Number four, skepticism will increase. And number five, the Bible will still be relevant. So what do we do with all this? Do we just take this information and let it kind of stir up some some fear within us or we just kind of hide it? No, here, here's why I share these things with you. Because I don't want you to flippantly slide into 2021 holding a handful of hopeful wishes. Look, look wishes are not going to accomplish anything. We've got to understand that there is work to do. There is a spiritual work to do. You have a spiritual calling before you to press on toward the prize of the upward calling that you have in Christ Jesus. And so we must prepare our hearts and our minds for action. And that we must do with purpose and intentionality. It will not happen by accident. We don't know what 2021 truly holds. We do know that God holds 2021, and he has a plan, and every single day is written in his book. And so here are four kind of very small action steps you and I can take. Find joy in the small things. Seek wisdom in the big things. Pray earnestly in the hard things. And be faithful in the simple things. Hey, I hope this conversation uh, with you today has been a blessing and an encouragement. I hope it's helping you to follow Christ in a life-changing way. If it has been helpful, would you consider liking or sharing uh, to people in your network, network? Maybe it'll be a blessing to others. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you have a blessed week as we close out 2020 and pray God's richest blessings on you in 2021. Take care.